Good evening, everybody. It's 8 o'clock. And welcome to the uh, the Friday Night Fun Net for Friday, uh, September 17, 2021, on the K9 RMD Repeater and Robert. My name is Jim. My call is K9 GCR. I'm located here at Freeport, and I'll be your deck control station this evening. The purpose of having this net is what the name implies, to have fun. This is what this hobby of amateur radio is all about, in addition to providing emergency communications in when situation warrants. A secondary purpose of this net is providing an on-air being place for all amateur radio operators. Everybody is welcome to check in. You do not have to be a member of any club, organization, group, or association to participate in this net. All you need is a valid FCC license. This net meets each every Friday evening at 8 p.m. This repeater is a BL 114.8 uh, plus offset. You need to add that program in your radio in order to have access to the repeater. For those of you who may be using older radios that do not have PL capability, or if the PL on your radio is not working properly, you can check in the Friday night fun net by using the repeater output frequency to straight 195 simplex. I will hear you as now to and check you into the net. That's how Scott Case YI up in Monroe checks in. Uh, and uh, he used to throw this beam to the south when he was uh, talking to me, and I vote everybody got to hear him. Okay, if you're on the six, you can hear the repeater, but you can't get it into the conditions, or you're else you're too far away from it, or what have you. You can give me a call on the Friday Night Fun at Central Hotline. It's area code 815-232-FNFN. 232-3636, local report number. I'll take your checking over the phone, but try to check it on the radio first. Okay, here's what we're going to do. First, we're going to take a short time on both stations. If you rather concentrate, you're driving, you've got family time going on, something else happening that you can't stay for the net, we'll take your short time on both check-ins. If you have traffic, we'll do your traffic right away. And we get done with short time on both stations, we'll take general check-ins. First, we'll take general check-ins from Northern Illinois. Uh, next, we'll take general check-ins from Southern Wisconsin. After that, we'll take general check-ins from anywhere in Northern Illinois or Southern Wisconsin. Uh, when you check in the net, state whether or not you have a, a, a traffic. Your traffic consists of breakfast, uh, bike rides, marathons, of course, uh, and fest. Uh, next weekend, the uh, one we've all been waiting for, the CFMC or Belvedere Hamfest. Then uh, we'll do our regular features. We'll do the uh, uh, tech, uh, tech net. If anybody have any technical questions, you having a problem with your amplifier or your uh, power supply, what kind of an antenna you want to put up in your tower. If you have technical questions, or be, please feel free to ask them, and we'll try to answer them for you. Then we'll do the uh, W9 and Gene Duncan the DX Corner. This is in honor of our late great friend and colleague, Gene Duncan, W9 GD, the king of DX. Every time you check this net, you always had a DX report. We'll have our, our swap net. If you have any items to buy, sell, or trade, or want anything to relate to hobbies of ramp radio or computers, we'll do that. The round table. Of course, the next weekend, a week from this coming Sunday, is the Belvedere Hamfest, CFMC Hamfest. I'm uh, asking everybody, when you go to Hamfest, you go to buy stuff, you go to look around, or you go just to meet people, or what do you do? That'll be the uh, that'll be the discussion tonight. Of course, then we'll do our Friday night fun net uh, trivia segment also. We had about two and a half hour net last week, and I had 40 check-ins. Same numbers I had them two weeks ago. We'll see how long we go. We'll see how many check-ins we get. Okay, with all the so-called formalities out of the way, let's get underway. Do we have any short time for mobile stations? I'd like to check in at this time. Please call now. Thank you, says T. Larry, no traffic. Got a rock tonight, sorry. T9T says T back in the Okay, uh, K9 KZT. Larry and Rockford, the, the king of uh, CW. Great job on the. Uh, Cold sessions every Monday, Tuesday, and th Thursday night. We'll let you go, Southern Three. Thank you for checking in. Have a good evening. Uh, there was another station trying to check in. Another station, come back, please. This is Alpha Alpha 9 Victor Uniform. Michael in Janesville. It's short time, no traffic. Okay, uh, 
Mike View, Mike and Jane's show. Got you checked in, uh, Mike. Seven three, have a good evening. Thank you for checking in. Any more short time mobile stations for the Friday Night Fun Net? Please call now. AC nine NW, Tom and Roscoe. Short time, no traffic. Tom and Roscoe, got you checked in, Tom. Thank you for checking in. You have a good evening. Enjoy your weekend. Any more short time on both stations for the Friday Night Fun Net? Please call now. KD9 SBA. Mobile. No, no traffic right now. I'll try to check back in later, Jimmy. Okay, I got two stations. Check, try and check at the same time. KD9, SBA, Matt, and Mobile, down in Ogle County. I got you checked in. Drive safely. Thank you for checking in. Enjoy your evening. Enjoy your weekend. There was another station trying to check in. Uh, come back, please. KD9, TJL, Tim and Rockford, short time. Uh, Tim, welcome to the Friday Night Fun Net. Come back with the last three letters of your call, please. Juliet Lima. KD9 TJ and L, the Tim, the new kid on the block in Winnebago County. Welcome to the Friday Night Fun Net. This time meets each every Friday evening at 8 p.m., either on this repeater or on the 146.61 repeater. Thank you for checking in, uh, Tim. You have a good evening, and uh, uh, hopefully we'll catch you next uh, Friday night. Any more short time or mobile stations would like to check in? Please call now. AC9 GCR, W9 JTC. He's going to check in short time tonight, Jimmy. Might try to check in later, 73. W9 JTC, Jamie and Rockford, short time. You'll try to check in later on during the net. Okay, uh, uh, Jamie, thank you for checking in. Have a good evening. Hopefully we'll hear from you later on during the net. There was another station trying to check in. Other station, come back, please. KD9, SHG, short time. No traffic. DJ SHD, short time. Okay, we got you checked in. Have a good evening, and uh, thank you for checking the Friday Night Fun Net. Uh, we'll talk to you down the log. Any more short time mobile stations for the Friday Night Fun Net? Please call now. KL7JAB. KL7JEB, Bill and Robert. Got you checked in, Bill. Thank you for checking in at, at 73. Have a good evening. Enjoy your evening. Enjoy your weekend. Any more short time or mobile stations for the Friday Night Fun Day? Please call now. Okay, uh, uh, Let's see, we got eight stations checked in short time, so we'll move on to general check-ins. At this time, I will take general check-ins from Northern Illinois for the Friday Night Fun Day. Please call now. KD9MAP, Kerry and Rockford. KD9MAP, Kerry, the Duke of uh, Digital DX. Got you checked in, uh, uh, Kerry. We look forward to you hear your DX report in, in, a, in a few minutes, and I got one myself to pass along. You'll be, you'll be surprised. <laughs> okay, thank you for checking in, Terry. Uh, any more general check-ins from Northern Illinois for the Friday Night Fun Net? Please call now. KD9, MED, Mike and Rochelle. Mike and Rochelle. Mike is recording the uh, this edition of the Friday Night Fun Net for future rebroadcasts on the Friday Night Fun Net Facebook page. He's recording. I don't know how many that, that, uh, nets uh, we've had raised. So you're welcome to check out the Friday Night Fun Net Facebook page. Go to Friday Night Fun Net Central. You hear the you you hear past uh, 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 nets. At, it'll be the Friday Night Fun Net every night of the week. So I'll put it that way. <laughs> So, okay, sounds, sounds good, Mike. Thank you for checking in. We'll get back to you in a few minutes. 
Any more general checkups from Northern Illinois for the Friday night fun then? Please call now. Alpha Charlie 9, Golf Oscar, Larry and Rockton. AC9GO, uh, Larry and Rockton, Ra Ra Board President. Got to check in, Larry. I'll get back to you a few minutes around table. Thank you for checking in. Any more general check us from Northern Illinois with the Friday Night Fun Net. Please call now. November 9, Golf Bravo Papa. Greg and Rockford. Hello, Charlie 9, Golf Oscar Lima, Jimmy Rockford. WX9, RLT, Ricky Los Park, no traffic. Okay, I got three stations checked in. N9GBP, uh, Greg and Rockford have got you checked in. I'll get back to you a few minutes around the table. Thank you for checking in. Uh, KC9GOL, Jimmy and Rockford have got you checked in. I'll get back to you a few minutes around the table also. WX9RLT, Ricky and Los Park have got you checked in. Uh, uh, I'll get back to you a few minutes around the table. Great conversation with, uh, with uh, uh, Tim. Uh, uh, earlier this evening. That, that was KD9 the TJL, new kid on the block, on, on the digital side. Thank you for checking in, uh, Ricky. Uh, any more general tenants from Northern Illinois for the Friday Night Fund Net? Please call now. Okay. Uh, we had a good turnout from Northern Illinois. Let's see if we get just a good turnout from Southern Wisconsin. Any stations in Southern Wisconsin would like to check in? Please call now. Aim uh, stations in Southern Wisconsin wishing to check in the Friday Night Fun Net at this time. Please call now. Well, I'm sure we'll hear from the Scott, uh, uh, K9YI and Monroe, we'll, we'll hear them later on in the net there. So, okay, uh, uh, it's Friday night fish night, Friday night in Wisconsin. Everybody's at their favorite bar, restaurant, having eaten your, boy, uh, their, uh, catfish, buffalo, carp, northern pike, walleye, muskie, uh, crappie, or, uh, and any, uh, those of you in Milwaukee, are you, you're tailgating at, uh, American Family Field, formerly Miller Park, I still call it Miller Park, a good ball game between the Cubs and the Brewers, and you're eating your pulley sauces, hot dogs, brats, uh, uh, kielbasa, and brats right here. Of course, uh, you're also eating some of that famous Wisconsin cheese. Okay, at this time, I don't take chickens from anywhere in Northern Illinois or Southern Wisconsin for the Friday Night Fun Day. Please go now. Hey, this is case on G Sharon that control the Friday night fund and anybody from Northern Illinois or Southern Wisconsin wishing to check in, please call now. Okay, we'll try, we'll have some more check ins and no doubt later on during the net. Uh, let's go ahead with the traffic portion. I do have some traffic. It is with uh, great uh, delight. Happiness that I report that the Mel N9RPN is back home. Uh, he came home last uh, uh, Saturday. I'll tell I'll tell you what. Uh, uh, I was doing the swap net this past uh, Wednesday night on the on the three nine repeater. I thought that just for heck, what I'm going to put out his call, and I so I did. He sure enough, he came right back to me. It was a, that was great. So he did the amateur radio news line and everything. Uh, that was a uh, He's going to be having home therapy. He's getting along uh, uh, fine. So we, he says thanks. He wants to thank everybody for all the uh, cards and he, they, they you said them and the prayers uh, that that you said uh, too. They really helped. Also, Tony and N A R B are easy here to see in county. Is scheduled to come home from his deployment in New Jersey tomorrow. So uh, we uh, we wish him a uh, 
welcome home. He did a, he did a great job over there in, in uh, Jersey. Okay. Uh, at this time, does anybody have any traffic that you'd like to pass along for the net? Please go ahead. Okay, we'll go ahead with the uh, tech net portion. Are you having a problem with your uh, power supply or amplifier? What time is it telling you want to put up on your tower? Uh, do you have any technical questions? Uh, please feel free to ask them and we'll try to answer them for you. Does anybody have any technical questions they'd like to bring before the net? Okay, uh, we're moving right along here. Uh, let's uh, go uh, go ahead with the uh, W9 Gene Duncan to DX Corner. This is an honor of our late great friend and colleague, Gene Duncan, W9 GD, the king of DX. Every time you check this net, you always have a DX report. At this time, does anybody have a, a DX report that you'd like to pass along? Please go ahead. KD9 MAP. Okay, Gary, uh, go ahead with your DX report. What do you got for us? This is KD9 MAP. Thanks, Jimmy. Good evening, everybody. I only got on the uh, on the FT8 twi uh, two days this week for 22 QSOs, but I still managed to work 12 countries, and I got a new country, TK5IH in Corsica which is a kind of a big island in the Mediterranean that the, the French, they think they control that island. And that's where Napoleon came from, I guess. Brief reset. I also worked another station in Yakutsk, which is about as deep into Siberia as you can get. R0QAF. By the way, Yakutsk is where the Mammoth Museum is at, so if you're ever there, you want to be sure to check out the, the Frozen Mammoth Museum in Yakutsk, Russia. KD-9MAP. Okay, what was that call sign of that station you worked in uh, Corsica? Tango Kilo 5, India Hotel. Okay, I wrote down a C, so I, uh, but so I made, I wrote down the T over the C, so, okay. Uh, uh, thank you for that uh, DX report, and now I'm going to, as soon as I find my papers here, I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you my DX report. This happened, let's see, on the, this past Wednesday. This was uh, uh, during the 4 o'clock hour, I was monitoring a 14.250 and uh, 20 meters up her side band. I was listening, there was a station, it's a uh, Sierra 57 Delta X-ray. He's over in Slovenia. I, uh, uh, let's see. After several attempts, I finally was able to make uh, the contact with, with that station. It was, uh, let's see. Uh, he was giving me a 7.0, uh, and I think uh, I was giving him 5.9. Uh, uh, it was at uh, 21 uh, 44 hours uh, Zulu time. It's a successful contact. That's my second overseas uh, uh, contact. Uh, about, uh, I think it was about three years ago, I made a contact with a station in Western France. But, uh, but that's my second overseas contact with uh, Croatia. I did work some stations in uh, the Caribbean and, and, and uh, Puerto Rico a, few, a couple years back, but that was great. Uh, Sierra 5 and 7 uh, Delta X-ray in the Slovenia. I don't know what the what the town he was located in, but uh, but that was my uh, that was my second uh, uh, overseas contact. Well done, Jimmy. Yeah, Wednesday was was the the last day of of an extraordinarily good week for DX. We had really really good space weather conditions. 
and unfortunately now they've petered out today. Today the sunspot number is back down to zero and the solar flux is back down to 73. You, on, on 20 meters, you can do DX a lot. You know, it's the best, the best band for DX in my opinion. But on a day like today, you'll have to work for it. KD-9 MAP. Thank you very much for that that uh, that information, uh, er, uh, Rick. Uh, that, that, thank you for your DX report. You work side, you work Corsica in Siberia on FDA, and I when I worked uh, Croatia on uh, 20 meters of upper uh, upper side band. So uh, okay, uh, does anybody else have any DX reports they'd like to pass along? Okay, let me get my, get my paper. Oh, yeah. Next item on the agenda will be a swap net. All items the bought, sold, or traded must be related to hobbies of app trading or computers. All items the bought, sold, or traded must be the property of or possession of the person who wants to get rid of the stuff. You may mention the price to order the air, but any haggling should be done either in person or over the telephone. Also, no commercial business of any kind is allowed. Is there any uh, station with swap net traffic at this time? Uh, by the way, next Friday, I will not have a swap net segment. I think with the Belvedere half has coming up, I think it's only uh, it's only right. I don't to me, I don't think it's right for me to have a swap net when everybody's looking forward to buying stuff at uh, Belvedere. So I will there will again there will be no swap net segment next Friday night. We'll pick it up again on the uh, the following Friday night. Okay, let's go with. Uh, uh, the topic at hand, when you go to a ham fest, if you're looking for something to buy, do you like to go just meet people or just look around, what do you like to do? Okay, uh, Kerry, KD9MAP, what do you say? This is KD9MAP. I'm going to talk about my day a little bit first here. Uh, I've been uh, fiddling around with the 40 meter ham sticks this week. Uh, I've had success with 20 meter ham sticks in the past, but I finally got it, uh, got one tuned up today really well, and it, and uh, I changed out the set screws on it, and it turned out it had 80 meter set screws in it instead of 40 meter set screws. So when I changed the screws, it worked worked fine. Brief reset. So I've got it on the car right now and it's running a whisper beacon and I'm getting spotted all over North America. I'm not getting across the Atlantic tonight, but the, like I said, the conditions are bad. All right, on to Hamfest. Free free set. Uh, usually when I go to Hamfest, I'm looking to price things just to see what people are asking for stuff. Uh, I, if I see little piece parts for my uh, uh, junk box, especially connectors and adapters. Uh, I'll snag those if they're priced right. Uh, and this time around, yeah, I do want to meet a lot of the people that I've been talking to on the radio for so long now. I'm looking forward to that. KD9MAP. That's great. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, Carrie, hopefully I'll, I'll meet you in, in, in person. Oh, by the way, that's right, speaking of ham fest, I'm looking for someone to come over and uh, to, to, pick, to uh, pick me up and to, to take me over there. I'm sure some, maybe some of the guys here in Seamster County, I want to I contact them the next week and find out if they'll be able to take me. Uh, if, if not, uh, we'll see about, uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, you know how to get a hold of me if you want to come and uh, the, the pick me up and take, take me over over to Belvedere. So we'll just uh, we'll just see what happens. I'll, I'll let everybody know if I, uh, I got a ride or not. So sounds good. Okay, Carrie, thanks for uh, your input there on the roundtable. Uh, 
KD9MED, Mike Donwell Show, is recording this set for future broadcasts, rebroadcasts, and Friday Night Fun at Facebook page. What do you do at Hampus? You look, you buy stuff, you meet people, or you look around, or what do you do? KD9MED, uh, yes, I do all of that. Uh, I like to look around and look at some of the vintage uh, radio stuff, uh, anything CW related, uh, get a little extra gear that I need, some little odds and ends and whatnot, meet a few people, uh, brief reset. I uh, got a chance to meet, uh, speaking of meeting people, I got a chance to meet one of the guys that actually uh, built parts for the Viking lander that was on Mars way back in the 70s. It's always interesting to go to a ham fest because you never know who you're going to meet. And uh, yeah, just the experience. And I am also have my daughter involved now these days. Kitty 9 med back to net. Okay, Mike, sounds good. Hopefully I'll, I'll meet you in the, the Belvedere next uh, uh, Sunday. Uh, thank you for checking in, and thank you for all you do on recording this uh, net for future rebroadcasts on the Friday Night Fun Net uh, Facebook page. Uh, uh, every night is Friday night. If you listen to the Friday Night Fun Net on the Facebook page. Uh, Larry, AC9GO, the Round Rod Board President. What's going on with you? What do you do at Amphis? You like to buy stuff? Look around, meet people, or what? Uh, yeah, all that and above. <laughs> I, I really enjoy going to Ham Fest because there's there's so much, and I usually find you know some some small things to buy, and you know once in a while I've I've. Uh, but uh, a transceiver or something, uh, you know, for, uh, I know I bought one for two many years ago, and uh, it, I, I enjoy meeting the people as well, because, uh, you know, I sit, sit down and, and uh, have a sandwich or a cup of coffee or something, and end up talking to a couple of hams, and uh, meet people that way. It's kind of interesting just to go through the various uh, uh, exhibits and see what people have that they're selling out of their trunk or whatever. I, I just have a ball just walking around talking and and looking at stuff. And uh, generally I, I, I spent probably less than... Uh, 70 bucks at <laughs> any of them, but uh, I just enjoy them. AC9GO, back to net. I hear you, uh, uh, Larry, I hear you. Okay, sounds good. Hopefully, hopefully I'll meet you uh, uh, next uh, Sunday. We'll see what happens. Thank you for checking in there. Uh, N9GBP, uh, Greg in Rockford. Uh, what do you do? Do you go to Amfest to buy stuff, or look around, or meet people, or what do you do? Well, I haven't been to a Amfest yet, but I'm planning on it this time, so probably all of the above. Sounds good. That's probably what I'll be doing, too. <laughs> Anything else you'd like to bring for the net? Not really too much tonight, so, uh, 73, but I'll be with tonight. Okay, great. Thank you for checking in. We'll talk to you next Friday night. So, okay. Of course, I'm sure we'll probably hear you on some of the other nets in the area, too. Okay. K9GOL, Jimmy, in the uh, Rockford. Uh, what do you do at Ampest? Do you look to buy stuff or meet people or look around or what? Well, if uh, uh, Kirk had checked in, I would have said I always make sure that I drop a few uh, dollars so Kirk can walk behind me and pick them up uh, so he can say that he had a great ham fest. But no, other than that, uh, I'm there to buy. I'm there to buy small parts, uh, sometimes oddball instruments, uh, 
you know, and and again, yeah, connector, a few connectors, <clears throat> but I got I got most of the connectors that I would need. But yeah, I still I'm still buying parts and then oddball pieces of equipment, Jimmy. So it was Casey on GOL back to net. Okay, Jimmy, sounds good. Well, uh, we'll talk to you all, the, uh, all throughout next uh, the, the coming week here, but hopefully I'll see you in person on the on the, the, the 26th. Uh, uh, thank you for checking in there, uh, uh, Jimmy. Now, WX9RLT, Ricky, what do you do at Amphis? Buy stuff, meet people, or look around, or what? Uh, good evening to hear Jimmy and everybody out there on the net. Uh, congratulations on the DX to both you guys out there, Carrie and Jimmy. Um, for the uh, ham fest, uh, I'd just like to go and talk to people. Uh, it's good to uh, talk to people in person. I know a lot of people talk to you know people on the radio, but I'm a you know face to face kind of guy. So radio is always good, but face to face is even better. Um, you know the other thing I like about it is uh you know you get to see a lot of cool objects you don't get to see on an everyday basis you know you could scroll ham radio outlet and you know other websites and find some pretty cool stuff but you know you go to a ham fest and you know some of the objects that are there you know you've never seen and it's kind of uh um i don't know uh it's kind of like a christmas uh thing you know christmas morning <laughs> you kind of go there and uh you know, you get to see a lot of cool things. So, but the main thing is just to talk to people, learn things, and uh, you know, see what uh, cool items are out there. You know, uh, the last time I went, uh, I did really enjoy uh, doing this. Um, there was a, a vendor, and uh, he was there. And I don't want to say the name because you know it get to, gets a little political with Yezu and Motorola and stuff like that with some people. So I won't say the name, but you know there was a vendor that was there, and you know I talked to the guy for quite a while. Gosh, I think probably a good half hour, forty five minutes. But you know, obviously his job was to sell the items, but you know just talking to him and learning about the products was really cool. So you know I'll have to add that one to the list is uh, you know the vendor, um, you know being there and kind of uh explaining the products that they were selling and i thought that was really kind of cool and uh you know a lot of people are probably you know calling me every name in the book right now but i thought that was kind of a cool experience um other than that you know uh the best advice obviously is get your butt up early in the morning and get out there uh, as they say early bird gets the worm so i know one thing i'm looking forward to it so hopefully i'll be able to see everybody out there hopefully everybody's you know having a good night and stay cool it's gonna be a warm one back to you jimmy wx9 rld okay ricky sounds good hey ricky even if you don't spend a one single penny at the amp fest, at least you get to look around and look at look different stuff. You get to meet people, and uh, and what have you. Oh, by the way, there will be a VE testing session next uh, at, on the day of the uh, uh, amp fest. So uh, I'm sure if anybody listening, we're gonna in a few minutes we're gonna do Friday night fun that trivia, and uh, you'll be at, if you want to take the. Again, there'll be VE testing session at the uh, ham fest on the uh, on Sunday the the 26th. Uh, but uh, yeah, uh, they might give some demonstrations on different stuff, or may have lectures on ham radio or what have you. They're fine, even if you don't uh, spend a dime. At least to go there, at least to look around, meet people, and uh, just uh, have a good time. That's what it's all about. And my. Uh, now, as far as my uh, participating goal, at the 2014 AMFest, thanks to Richard N9ZO, he bought he, he bought a cap he had made for me. It was a yellow cap with Friday Night Fun Net Case 9 GCR in the black lettering. I regret to say somehow I lost that cap. I don't see it around anymore. So hopefully somebody will be there that, that, that has caps for sale and put stuff on. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see if I can buy a yellow one. Uh, a yellow cap with a yellow black lettering group. Uh, Friday Night Fun at Case 9 GCR. Other than that, I don't know what kind of stuff I'll be looking for. We'll just see what happens. That concludes my list. 
Do we have any more stations who would like to check in the Friday night fun net? Please call now. KC9 GCR, this is KD9 QVB, Brian and Roscoe. Glenn and Roscoe, come back with the last two letters of your call. You might want to repeat them phonetically if you would, please. I'll give you the whole thing. It's Kilo Delta 9, Quebec Victor Bravo. I think I've talked to you before. Oh, yeah. KD9QVB. Okay. You're, you're, one of the, you're one of the new hams, newer hams, I should say. Uh, when you, I'm asking a question. When you go to a ham fest, you look to buy stuff? You want, are you looking to meet people or just look around or uh, what do you do? Well, I always start by looking around, kind of walking the whole place, seeing what's what. Uh, I always have a few bucks in my pocket in case I see something that I didn't realize I needed that I end up needing. And I'll, if it's a good price or whatever, I'll buy it. But, uh, and I've met a few people, some that I've talked to on the radio before, and then others that I have never talked to that are very knowledgeable and always willing to share some thoughts on any questions I have. That's great, that's great, that, that, that's what you, uh, you got to learn, just ask the pros, if you will. <laughs> uh, they'll, they'll, they'll give you some words of wisdom, and then you can uh, uh, go from there. They'll definitely, definitely help you out, and uh, that's, uh, that's for sure. Hopefully, I'll get, maybe I'll get to meet you sometime uh, this uh, next Sunday. We'll see what happens. Thank you for checking in, uh, Glenn, uh, K9QV uh, Bravo. Okay, uh... Any more stations want to check in the Friday Night Fun Net? Please call now. Oh, well, we must be having a slow net tonight. Everybody must be enjoying the weather before the hot weather uh, comes in. So, uh, okay. Uh, you know what? Speaking of ham fest, I gotta get out my radio nuts, a, a joke book here. I gotta, let, let's see. Oh boy. I'll find it. There's a question about that. Uh, uh, oh, just a minute. Hold on. Hold on. No, that's, that's not the right one. I'll find it. Okay. Any more stations want to check in? Please go on out. Okay. Oh, we'll find. We'll find it here. I'm still looking for that radio nut uh, uh, joke. Uh, if you have a homemade radio nut joke you want to pass along, you can uh, give me a call here on the radio on the, the uh, uh, Friday Night Fun Net uh, uh, hotline. So, uh, oh boy. We'll find, we'll find it here. <laughs> Sorry about that. All right. Uh, we'll worry about it later. Are there any more stations? You want to check in the Friday night fun then. You're coming home with your Friday night fish fry, steak fry, grocery shopping, or the show. If you've been, uh, if you uh, just came home, turned your radio on, you've been copying mail for the last uh, 40 minutes, this is your chance to check in the Friday night fun then. Anywhere in the region, we'll drop traffic. Please call case on GCR. Okay, I'll tell you what. We're uh, we're gonna go ahead and do the uh, the Friday night fun that uh, uh, trivia. Uh, we got a lot of new uh, people 
or uh, trying to take their first ham radio test, uh, or license test, I should say. They listen to this net on the scanner because they are on the other net, or in the, the uh, weather spot in the situation where we have severe weather in the area. The, they can't listen to the police communications anymore on their scanner unless they have a very expensive uh, uh, digital uh, scanner, or else they just listen for the, uh, they're either taking their first ham radio test or else uh, they listen for the enjoyment of it. This is for the benefit of those people who are taking their first am uh, their technician's test. As I stated, there will be a VE testing session at the uh, uh, Belvedere Ham Fest next uh, uh, Sunday. And uh, also, uh, next month, uh, we will have a VE testing session here in Freeport on Saturday. October 2nd at 12.30 p.m. at the Freeport Public Library. If you want more information, uh, contact uh, Brandon uh, uh, K908. All right, here's the first question. What is proof of possession of an SEC issued operator slash primary license grant? A, a printed operator slash primary station license issued by the FCC must be displayed at the transfer site. B. The control operator must have an operator slash primary station license in his or her possession when in control of a transmitter. C. The control operator's license slash primary station license must uh, appear in the FCC ULS consolidated uh, licensee database. D. All of these sources are correct. What is proof of possession of an FCC-issued operator slash primary license grant? A. A printed operator primary station license issued by the FCC must be displayed at the transmitter site. B. The control operator must have an operator slash uh, primary station license in his or her possession when in control of a transmitter. D, the control operator's operator slash primary station license must appear in the FCC ULS consolidated license. D, all of these choices are correct. Check in, case 9 QLS. Next question. Checking in, KC9 QLS. There's a blast from the past, as you used to say on the rock and roll station. KC9 QLS, uh, uh, Linda, what's going on? What's going on with you? Long time, no hear. Yeah, it's been quite a while, you're right. But I'm checking in, and the answer is D. Uh, I'll tell you what, uh, sorry about that, that's, uh, uh, Linda, that, I hate to say, that's, that's not, uh, that's not, uh, uh you, you said detailed, uh, sorry, Linda, that's not, uh, correct, but thank you for trying. Good hearing from you again. I'll, we'll finish the trivia question, I want to get back, I want to get back to you, sir, so, uh, anybody else want to give it a shot? This is KD9 QVB. I'm guessing the answer is the one that mentioned being in the database. You are correct, Greg. You are uh, uh, correct. What is proof of possession of an FCC issued operator slash primary license uh, grant? Correct answer C, Charlie. The control operator's operator slash primary station license must appear in the FCC ULS Consolidated Licensee Database. Well, you know, by rights, it really should be D to Delta, uh, by rights. 97.7, uh, once your information appears in the FCC ULS Consolidated uh, Database, that's proof you have been granted an operator slash station license 
and are fully authorized to go on the air. The FCC no longer routinely issues the printed licenses, although they are available upon request. Ham Radio License Manual, page 7-9. Uh, uh, My license will not is not up for renewal for another three years, but for 2024, but I will still request a, a copy of a, a license so I can put it on this plate. Oh, Linda, KC9QLS, uh, are you going to go to the uh, Belvedere Handfest this year? If you do, what are you going to You going to look around? Are you going to buy stuff or you meet people or what are you going to do? Well, Patrick and I have been talking about it, but I uh, recently had uh, surgery on my foot and pending a second surgery on my foot. So uh, I'm not real good on uh, walking or standing for real long. So I might give it a try. I don't know. Patrick and I have been talking about it, and uh, it's been a long time. God, since Aries shut down. Yeah, I understand. understand. Does Pat want to check in, or shall I go ahead and put him down? Yeah, he's hollering to me, put him down. That's N9SOC checking in. KC9QLS checking in for N9SOC. Okay, he's probably listening to the ball game. So, okay, I got him, I got him checked in. Uh, Linda, it's a pleasure talking to you. Don't be a stranger. Yeah, well, hopefully we'll, we'll hear you again. Uh, next Friday night, of course, on some of the other nets, like the Elton Tech Nets and what have you, they're there, too. Thank you for checking in, uh, Linda. Well, have a good evening. Enjoy your weekend. Thank you for checking the Friday night fun then. Well, it's Pat. Okay, Jimmy. Uh, it's nice to talk to you um, in and out, and uh, you have a, a good net. That is so good to hear the people that haven't been on the air for years come back on come back to the airways. That that is wonderful. <laughs> okay, sounds that sounds good. Okay, let's move on with the the, the trivia segment. Uh, if I can find, I'm trying to avoid you reading the same questions all all the time. So that's the the thing. Okay. All right. What? Is the amateur radio emergency service, or ARIES, A, licensed amateurs who have voluntarily registered their qualifications and equipment for communications and duties in the public service, B, licensed amateurs who are members of the military and who voluntarily agree to provide message handling services in the case of an emergency, C, a training program that provides licensing uh, courses for those interested in obtaining an amateur license to use during emergencies. D. A training uh, uh, program that certifies amateur operators for membership in the radio amateur civil emergency service. Let me reset. I'm going to read this again. I don't want to hear that cuckoo again. <laughs> What is the amateur radio emergency service for Aries? A. Licensed amateurs who have voluntarily registered their qualifications and equipment for communications duties in the public service. B. Licensed amateurs who are members of the military and who will voluntarily agree to provide message handling services in the case of the emergency. C a training program that provides licensing courses for those interested in obtaining an after license used during emergencies. D, a training program that uh, certifies amateur operators for membership in the, in the radio amateur civil emergency service. Anybody have a correct answer to this question? Nine MAP is guessing A Alpha. Well, you are correct, Gary. You are correct. What is the amateur radio emergency service or Aries? Correct answer is A Alpha. Licensed amateurs who have voluntarily registered 
their qualifications and equipment for communications duties in the public service. Aries consists of licensed amateurs who have voluntarily registered their qualifications and the equipment for communications duties in the public service. Ham Radio License Manual, page 6-18. Hopefully uh, you guys will get your Aries group uh, uh, back in operation again. Uh, we have an Aries group here in Stevenson County. Of course, we have our local Aries net. Wednesday evening at uh, 7 p.m. on the 147.390 repeater in Freeport PL 114.8. Plus on that. Okay. Find another one here. Uh. Okay. What is a relay? A. An electrically controlled switch. B. A current controlled amplifier. C. An optical sensor. D, a pass transistor. What is a relay? A, an electrically controlled switch. B, a current controlled amplifier. C, an optical sensor. D, a pass transistor. Anybody have correct answer to this question? KD9, QPB, um, my guess would be A. Okay, and, uh, 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 stand by. And, uh, Greg, I copied you. There's another station trying to get in there. I want to be fair to everybody here. Another station from that place. KD9 QVB is Brian. Okay, Brian, just a minute. Well, let me get back to you. Now, there was, there was another station trying to get in, another station come back. That was KD nine MAP. I like A Alpha. Okay, Carrie. Answer is A Alpha. Brian, what do you say? I also said A Alpha. Okay, well I'll be fair to everybody, and both of you are correct. What is a relay? Correct answer is A Alpha. An electrically controlled switch. A switch is operated manually while a relay is a, let's do that again, a, the correct answer is A alpha, a switch is operated manually while a relay is a switch controlled by an electromagnet. It's an AM radio license manual, P3-13. Let's see if we can find another one here. Uh, uh, yeah. We'll find, we'll find one here. Okay. Which of the following, uh, which of the following affects might cause radio signals to be heard despite obstructions between the transmitting and receiving stations? A. Knife edge diffraction. B. Faraday rotation. C. Quantum tunneling. D. Doppler shift. Which of the following effects might cause radio signals to be heard despite obstructions between the transmitting and receiving stations? A. Knife edge diffraction. B. Faraday rotation. C. Quantum tunneling. D. Doppler shift. Anybody have correct answer to this question? KD9HKX, A Alpha. K9HKX, Larry and Roscoe, you are correct. Well, let, me, let me get back to you in a minute here. Which of the following uh, effects might cause radio signals to be heard despite obstructions between the transmitting and the receiving signal? Uh, stations, I should say. Correct answer is A alpha, knife edge diffraction. Radio waves can be diffracted as they travel past sharp edges of large objects. This type of propagation is uh, called knife edge diffraction. And radio license manual page 4 2. KD9HKX, Larry and Roscoe. I'm asking a question tonight. Belvedere Ampest is a week from this coming Sunday. Do you, I don't know if you're going to go or not, but uh, when you go to Ampest, what do you look for? Do you look to buy stuff, or to look around, or just to meet people? What do you say? 
KC9 GCR, KD9 HKX. Uh, good evening, Jim, and good evening to everyone else still in the net. Um, I, you know, I think I go, would go, will go. Uh, hopefully I'll go, get to go. It depends on how everything works out. But uh, I would go for all those things. I, I, I'm still interested in, in old picking up new pieces of old uh, tube equipment. Um, I like to get it and repair it and put it back in use. Uh, and then I like to go and just meet the folks that are there and, and put, uh, you know, put faces to voices. Uh, you, you meet a lot of people on the air, but you got no clue what the what what they look like till you till you meet them in person. And, and I, uh, sometimes you, you you can visualize correctly, and sometimes uh, not so much. So uh, so I like to do a little of both. Um, back to you, Jim. Case nine GCR KD nine HKX. Okay, Lori, hopefully I meet you in person next Sunday. So th thank you for checking the Friday Night Fun Day. Enjoy your evening, enjoy your weekend. Thank you for participating in the tri trivia. Uh, Brian, are you still with us? Now, I want to make sure I got your call correct. Eagle Delta 9, Quebec, uh, Victor Bravo, is that your correct call? That is correct, Jimmy. This is case 9 gcr to Friday Night Funnet on the uh, K9R of D repeating the route for transmitting for Friday Night Funnet Central Air in Freeport. Ah, uh, I think I had some, but yeah, I... Okay, Brian, yeah, I did write your call, Tom. There was a... Uh, uh, Greg, Greg and Roscoe, are you still with us? I want to make sure that I got your call right. Come back with your call, please. Okay, sound that sounds good. Let's uh, let's continue on with the trivia. Why do we read a couple more questions in the uh, tech uh, tech Q and A, and uh, then we'll move on to the general. Okay, uh, I think I read that question. Okay, what is the gain of an antenna? A, the additional power that is added to the transmitter power. B, the additional power that is lost in the antenna when transmitting on a higher frequency. C, the increase in signal strength in a specified direction compared to a reference antenna. D, the increase in impedance on receive or transmit compared to a reference antenna. What is the gain of an antenna? A, the additional power that is added to the transmitter power. B, the additional power that is lost in the antenna when transmitting on a higher frequency. C, the increase in signal strength in a specified direction compared to a reference antenna. D, the increase in impedance on receive or transmit compared to a reference antenna. Anybody have the correct answer to this question? Probably got it wrong, but D Delta WX9 or OT. Well, Ricky, I'll tell you what, I'm afraid you did. <laughs> oh boy, you just have so much bad luck when you come to these trivia questions, don't we? <laughs> you better get the latest edition of the book and start studying. <laughs> All right, but it is, that was a wrong answer. Anybody else want to give it a try? 89 MAP is going with C. Charlie. Just by coincidence, I was reading that part of the book this afternoon. So, C. Charlie, 89 MAP. You are correct, Rick. You are, I mean, uh, you are correct, Charlie. You are correct. What is the gain of an antenna? Correct answer. C. Charlie, the increase in signal strength in a specified direction compared to a reference antenna. Concentrating an antenna's radiated signals in a specific direction is called gain. Antenna gain increases signal strength in a specified direction when, when compared to a reference antenna. In the AM radio license manual, page 4-7. Okay. We're going to have, last, this is going to be the last, uh, last question in the, uh, the tech unit. And then we'll move on, okay, then we'll move on to, uh, 
the general portion. All right. Okay. What are the toughest questions in the tech, general, or extra Q&A? Your tower questions, of course. Those of you who are planning on taking the BED uh, test next Sunday at the Belvedere Hamfest, the you new listeners out there who are studying for your license, someday you're going to be part of a, a tower support crew. You're going to be part of a climbing crew, I should say. You're going to be involved in climbing the tower itself or part of a ground support crew. This question might put you over the top when you take your, uh, as far as uh, getting your uh, a technician's license when you take your test next Sunday at the Belvedere Ham Fest. Let me reset. All right. Which of the following is an important safety precaution to observe when putting up an antenna tower? Uh, a. Wear a ground strap so it's connected to your wrist at all times. B. Insulate the base of the tower to avoid lightning strikes. C. Look for and stay clear of any overhead electrical wires. D. All of these choices are correct. Which of the following is an important safety precaution to observe when putting up an antenna tower? A. Wear a ground strap connected to your wrist at all times. B. Insulate the base of the tower to avoid lightning strikes. C. Look for and stay clear of any overhead electrical wires. D. All of these choices are correct. Anybody correct to answer this question? Well, since I love the tower ones, C. Charlie, WX9, RLT. Yay! You're correct! You're correct, Ricky. You finally did it. <laughs> you got finally got a tower question right. Which of the following is the important safety precaution to observe when putting up an antenna tower? Correct answer. See, Charlie. Look for and stay clear of any overhead electrical wires. Finally got one right, there, Ricky. <laughs> Power lines are the enemy of antenna installers. Place all antennas and feed lines well clear of the power lines including the utility service drop to your home. Be sure that if any part of the, the antenna or support structure falls, it cannot fall on the power line. A good guideline is to separate the antenna from the nearest power line by 150% of total height of tower or mass plus antenna. A minimum of 10 feet of clearance during a fall is a must. Is a must. Never attach an antenna or die wire to a utility pole since a mechanical failure could result in contact with the, the, the high voltage power lines. Ham radio license manual page 9 18. I wanted to hurry up and get that ready before I heard that cuckoo go off again. Okay, now we're going to move on to the general portion, but before we do, do we have any more stations I'd like to check in the Friday night fund net. Please call now. Uh, I still see we're in the slow net and I think people are out enjoying the weather. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, uh, get those fans and ACs cranked up tomorrow, folks. We're going to be hot for another couple of days. Summer is not going away. That's all right. That's the way we like it. You can stay through October for all I care. <laughs> okay, let's find another question here. Okay, uh... This question really belongs in the uh, tech uh, Q&A pool. But here we go. Which of the following complies with good amateur practice when choosing a frequency on which to initiate a call? A. Check to see if the channel is assigned to another station. B. Identify your station by transmitting your call sign at least three times. C. Follow the voluntary band plan for the operating mode you intend to uh, use. D. All these choices are correct. Which of the following complies with good amateur practice when choosing a frequency on which to initiate a call? A. Check to see if the uh, channel is assigned to another station. B. Identify your station by transmitting your call sign at least three times. 
see. Follow the voluntary band plan for the operating mode you intend to use. D. All of these choices are correct. Anybody correct to answer this question? I was told you have to say breaker, breaker, but I think it's not correct. <laughs> uh, D Delta, WX9, RLD. <laughs> well, sorry, I hate to say this, Rick, but that's, Rick, but that's not correct. Oh, well, hey, you, you got the one tower question right. That's the important thing. <laughs> Anybody else want to give it a try? Okay, I'm going to read the question and give the correct answer. Which of the following complies with good amateur practice when choosing a frequency on which to initiate a call? The correct answer is C. Charlie. Under normal conditions, following the voluntary band plan it is a good way to choose a frequency uh, compatible with your planned uh, type of operating. Very crowded bands or special operating events require that you be flexible in your frequency choices. General Class License Manual, page 2-2. Two -two. This is uh, K9GCR with the Friday Night Fun Net on the uh, K9 RMD Repair and Robert transmitting from Friday Night Fun Net Central and Freeport. Okay. Which of the following are least reliable for long-distance uh, communications during periods of low solar activity? A. 80 meters and 160 meters. B. 60 meters and 40 meters. C. 30 meters and 20 meters. D. 50 meters, 12 meters, and 10 meters. Which of the following are least reliable for long-distance communications during periods of low solar activity? A. 80 meters and 160 meters. B. 60 meters and 40 meters. C. 30 meters and 20 meters. D. 15 meters, 12 meters, and 10 meters. Anybody correct to answer this question? I guess I'm going to try redeeming myself since so nobody's going to jump in there. And I'm probably going to get this wrong as well. D-Delta, <laughs> back to you, Jimmy, WX9, early. Well, guess what, Ricky? You are correct. <laughs> Which of the following are least reliable for long-distance uh, communications during uh, periods of low solar activity? You got it correct, Ricky. It's a D-Delta. Uh, uh, Detailed the 15 meters, 12 meters, and 10 meters. The higher the frequency, the more ionization is needed in the ionosphere in order to refract, refract or bend the radio signal back to the Earth. When solar activity is low, signals at higher frequencies will pass through the ionosphere into space instead of being refracted back to Earth. During periods of low solar activity, the 15 meter, or 21 megahertz, 12 meters, 24.9 megahertz, and 10 meters, 28 megahertz bands are the reliable HF bands for long distance communication. General class slides and manual page uh, 8-7. You got a couple right, uh, Ricky, so you're getting there. That's great. Okay. Okay. Yeah. What is a use for an antenna analyzer other than measuring uh, the SWR of an antenna system? A. Measuring the front to back ratio of an antenna. B. Measuring the, the turns ratio of a power transformer. C. Determining the impedance of coaxial cable. D. Determining the gain of a directional antenna. What is a use for an antenna analyzer other than measuring the SWR of an antenna system? A. Measuring the front to back ratio of an antenna. B. Measuring the uh, turns uh, ratio of a power transformer. C. Determining the impedance of coaxial cable. 
D, determining the gain of a directional antenna. Anybody correct to answer this question? 
Uh, we need three. They need at least three guys to go down there and get them set up. So let's uh, let's let's get them back on the air. Do you have any honeydew list going on? Just say, honey, emergency came up. I gotta go help out a friend. <laughs> General Q and A. If I can find it. Uh. Oh, you know what? No, it's not going to be the last question. I'm going to read this here. Here's another one. In which direction is the maximum radiation from a portable VHF UHF halo antenna? A. Broadside to the plane of the halo. B. Opposite the feed point. D, omnidirectional in the plane of the halo. D, toward the halo supporting mass. In which direction is the maximum radiation from a portable VHF UHF halo antenna? A, broadside to the plane of the halo. B, opposite the feed point. C, omnidirectional in the plane of the halo. D, toward the halo supporting mass. Anybody correct to answer this question? This is case on GCR to Friday Night Funded on the K9 RFD repeater rock for transferring from Friday Night Funded Central and Freeport. AC9 and the GO, go ahead, Larry. Well, I believe it's uh, generally considered broadside unless it's uh, uh, up. If the height is so high, then it uh, uh, it goes on the uh, plane of the uh, of the antenna. It's uh, it's kind of strange. It it does change. AC nine GO. Uh, okay. I'll tell you what, uh, Larry. You talk about the plane, oh, well, I'll tell you what, you're, you're correct, I'll, I'll give you, the, that's the correct answer. What, in which direction is the maximum radiation from a portable VHF, UHF, halo antenna? Well, correct answer, C. Charlie, you're right, Larry, C. Charlie, omnidirectional in the plane of the halo. The halo antenna is a dipole bent into a circle or a square, or the square hole, with the ends separated by a small gap. The halo radiates most strongly in the plane of the antenna. Halos are usually mounted horizontally, so, so they produce an omnidirectional pattern with the horizontal polarization preferred for VHF weak signal operation. General class lights and manual page 7 15. All right. to avoid the same, uh, 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 reading the same questions over again. Uh, that, that, that's a thing, so. Okay. You read that. Okay, here we go. Last question. Which, uh, which of the following conditions will cause a ground fault to circuit interrupter or GFCI to disconnect the 120 or 240 volt to AC line power to a device? A, current flowing from one or more of the voltage carrying wires to the neutral wire. B, current flowing from one or more of the voltage carrying wires directly to ground. C, over voltage on the voltage carrying wires. D, all these choices are correct. Which of the following conditions will cause a ground fault circuit interrupter or GFCI to disconnect 120 or 240 volt AC line power to a device. A, current flowing from one or more of the uh, voltage carrying wires to the neutral wire. B, current flowing from one or more of the voltage carrying wires directly to ground. C, over voltage on the voltage carrying wires. D, all these choices are correct. Does anybody correct to answer this question?
Okay, I'll tell you, well, it's kind of a hard question anyway, so I'll, I'll read the, an the question and the answer. Which of the following conditions will cause a ground fold circuit interrupter or GFCI to disconnect the 120 or 240 volt AC line powder device? The correct answer is B, Bravo. Current flowing from the one or more of the voltage carrying wires directly to ground. A GFCI opens the circuit if it, de it detects an imbalance in the currents flowing through the hot and neutral leads. The imbalance re uh, indicates that some current is bypassing the neutral connection. That is a serious shock hazard and should be located and repaired. General class license manual page 9-6. Okay. Uh, do, are there any more stations I'd like to check in the Friday Night Fund at this time? Please call now. Okay, I'm going to read a couple, we'll read a couple questions from the, uh, uh, extra uh, Q&A. Okay. Oh, I think I read that question uh, a couple weeks ago. I don't want to read it again. Okay. Uh, how, those of you who work fast and TV should know the answer to this one by heart. How is an interlaced scanning pattern generated in a fast scan or in TSC television system? A. By scanning two fields simultaneously. B. By scanning each field from bottom to top. C. By scanning lines from left to right in one field and right to left in the next. D. E. By scanning odd numbered lines in one field and even numbered lines in the next. How is an interlaced uh, scanning pattern generated in a fast scan or NTSC television system? A. By scanning two fields simultaneously. B. By scanning each field from bottom to top. C. By scanning lines from left to right in one field and right to left in the, the next. D, by scanning odd number of lines in one field and even number of lines in the next. Anybody correct to answer this question? KV90 PZ. Boy, Al. D is in Delta. You are correct, Al. You are correct. How is an interlaced scanning pattern generated in the fast scan in the NTSC television system? Correct answer is a D delta by scanning the odd number of lines in one field and even number of lines in the next. And the discussion is rather lengthy, so I'm not going to bother reading it. We'll move on to the next question. Okay. All right. How is caller information sent in analog slow scan TV or SSTV? A. Call lines are sent sequentially. B. Caller information is sent on a 2.8 kilohertz subcarrier. C. Caller is sent in a caller burst at the end of each line. D. Caller is amplitude modulated on the... How is caller information sent in analog SSTV or slow scan TV? A. Caller lines are sent sequentially. B. Caller information is sent on a 2.8 megahertz subcarrier. C. Caller is sent in a caller burst at the end of each line. D. Caller is amplitude modulated on the frequency modulated uh, intensity signal. Anybody have correct to answer this question? Nobody's jumping in there. I'll take a wild guess and say C. Charlie WX9 RLD. <laughs> Sorry, Ricky, that's not correct. Hey, I gave you credit. At least you're, you're trying. You got you got two answers right tonight, so don't feel bad. Uh, anybody else? Well, I want to give it a shot. A A9 V U. A9 V U. 
you. I know you checked the show time earlier to see me, but uh, what do you say? I forgot already. <laughs> what is the question again? Okay, I'll read the question. How is color information set in ad hoc SSTV or slow scan TV? A. Color lines are set sequentially. B. Color information is set on a 2.8 uh, kilohertz subcarrier. C. Color is set in a color burst at the end of each uh, line. Uh, D. Color is amplitude modulated on the frequency modulated intensity uh, uh, signal. You think you got the correct answer, Mike? Go ahead. Well, I think the answer is B. No, sorry, Mike, that's not correct, but thank you for trying. I think that's the first time you ever tried to participate in the trivia segment, but no, that's not correct. Anybody else want to give it a shot? GCR to Finite Fund that on the uh, K9 RFD repeater rock for transferring for Finite Fund that's not one free board. Okay, I'm going, I'll read the I'll read the question and I'll get the correct answer. How is color information set in an analog SSTV or slow scan TV? Correct answer is A alpha. Color lines are set sequentially. By sending each line three times, one with red information, one with the blue, and one with the green. The lines can be combined to produce a full color RGB image. Extra class license manual, page uh, 8 23. Uh, uh, Mike, uh, 89VU, uh, the Belvedere Hamfest is coming up a week from this coming Sunday. I don't know if you'll be going or not, but when you go to a Hamfest, that's what the question I'm asking tonight. When you go to a Hamfest, do you go to buy stuff or to look around or to meet people? What do you say? Well, I like to look around. Um, generally, I don't have enough money to buy anything, but if I see something really uh, useful or exciting or that I really need, I might try to buy it. Um, yeah, it's good to, to, to associate with the fellow hams, though. Yeah, that's, uh, that's great. That, that's great. So, uh... Okay, hey, uh, thank you for checking into the uh, Friday Night Fund and participating in, in, in the, the uh, trivia uh, segment there. Uh, you have a good evening. We'll catch you on the Tuesday night at, uh, on that there, hopefully. Okay, what is, we're in the uh, extra portion of the trivia segment. What is the power factor of an RL circuit having a 60 degree phase angle between the voltage and the current? A. 1.4014 B. 0.866 C. 0.5 D. 1.73 What is the power factor of an RL uh, circuit having a 60 degree phase angle between the voltage and the circuit? And the current, I should say. A, 1.414, B, 0.866, C, 0.5, D, 1.73. Anybody correct to answer this question? Okay, I'll read the question and get the correct answer. What is the power factor of an RL circuit having a 60 degree phase angle between the voltage and the current? Correct answer. See, Charlie, 0 0.5. Find another one here. Uh, okay, which of the following noise figure values? Let's read that again. Which of the following noise figure values is typical? of a low noise UHF preamplifier. A, 2 dB. B, minus 10 dB. C, 44 dBm. D, minus 20 dBm. 
Which of the following noise figures and values is typical of a low noise UHF preamplifier? A, 2 dB, B, minus 10 dB, C, 44 dBm, D, minus 20 dBm. Anybody have a correct answer to this question? Okay, whoever's trying to get in, unable to copy, got nothing but noise with your signal. You want to increase your power, change location, please. I'm going to read this question one more time. Which of the following noise figure values is typical of a low noise UHF preamplifier? A, 2 dB, B, minus 10 dB, C, 44 dBm, D, minus 20 dBm. Anybody have a correct answer to this question? I'll jump in there and say A alpha. I'm not too familiar with the topic, but uh, was that two decibels above? Uh, sounds like the uh, something sensible. A alpha. <laughs> WX9 RLT. You are correct, uh, Ricky. You are correct. Which of the following noise uh, figure values is typical of a low noise UHF preamplifier? Correct answer is A alpha 2 dB. Don't worry, Rick, I'm not familiar with this topic myself. <laughs> noise figure measures, uh, noise figure measures the amount of noise generated internally by a circuit or receiver. So lower noise figures mean less noise will be added to the signal. Lower noise figures generally increase system sensitivity, particularly at VHF and higher frequencies. Noise figure values are expressed in DB, extra class license manual page, by dash 13, which I do not have. All right. This is going to be the last question of the evening, if I can find it. <laughs> All right. Okay, last question. How can the output voltage of a multiple turn and receiving loop antenna be increased? A, by reducing the uh, permeability of the loop shield. B, by utilizing high impedance wire for the coupling loop. C, by winding adjacent uh, turns in, out, in opposing directions. D, by increasing the m n number of turns and or the area. How can the output voltage of a multiple turn receiving loop antenna be increased? A, by reducing the pre uh, permeability of the loop shield. B, by utilizing high impedance wire for the coupling loop. C, by winding adjacent turns in opposing directions. Uh, D, by increasing the number of turns and or the area. Anybody correct to answer this question? Okay, I'll read the question and give the correct answer. How can the output voltage of a multiple turn receiving loop antenna be increased? The correct answer is G delta, by increasing the number of turns and or the area. The strength of the signal coming from a loop antenna is proportional to the cross-sectional uh, area of the antenna and the number of turns. The voltage increases as either of these parameters increase. Extra class license manual page 9-21. This concludes Friday night's fun and trivia for the, this week, folks. I want to thank everybody uh, for participating. And uh, Ricky WX9RLT, thank you. At least you got three of the questions uh, correct, especially you, you finally got a tower question uh, correct. All right. Okay. With that, are there any more decisions you wish to check in the Friday night fun then? Please call now. KD9, SHG, back on the air. KD9SHD, okay. What, uh, what is uh, happening uh, with you? Oh, just got off, uh, just got off school. KD9SHG, she is in golf. 
Okay, are you going to the uh, 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 CFMC AmFest next Sunday? If I'm asking a question, when you go to AmFest, I ask this question every year, do you go to look, uh, uh, to look around to meet people or do you go to buy stuff or do you do all three? Uh, I will not be going um, next Sunday. I'm going to be up in uh, Milwaukee. I'm going up to a Brewers game that weekend uh, break. And for, um, I've only been to one ham fest so far, and that was just uh, picking up equipment. But I did meet some uh, people out there. So a little bit of both. Okay, sounds good. Hey, take out SAP and get Thank you for checking the Friday night fun and enjoy your evening and uh, enjoy your weekend. Okay. Are there any more stations wishing to check in at this time? Please call now. I was getting my papers organized here. This is case 9 GCR to Friday Night Fun Down on the K9 uh, RFD repair and Robert Transfer for Friday Night Fun Down Central and Freeport. Okay, at this time I'm going to run down the list of all the other nets in the area. In about, uh, let's see, in about uh, 23 minutes, if you're able, uh, uh, the uh, CFMC uh, uh, Night Watch net will be getting underway. It's on the CFMC 443.750 repeater in Chicago. That has a PL 114.8 plus offset. If you cannot get into that, that the repeater, you can get it via the Echo Link. That net runs uh, uh, seven nights a week. The other night I listened, uh, they ran to about 11.30. But sometimes they run for an hour or an hour and a half or maybe longer than that. So if you're able, do check out that uh, night watch net. That's a good one they run in Chicago. Once in a while, well, well, Al K9 EPC checks into that net there. He lets me know what's going on, so so I can check in. So the other that, that night, the, the conditions were good. Well, unfortunately, I was not able to get into that net. Okay, the lunch punch net is held every day Monday through Friday from 12 noon to 1 p.m. Uh, there's a swap net at 12:30 p.m. It's on the 145.43 throw repeater in Downers Grove, Illinois. That has a PL 107.2 minus off. It's a W9TUP to Page County repeater. Uh, okay. Uh, Saturday evenings at 9 p.m. on the 146.910 repeater in Milwaukee. PL 123.0, 127.3 uh, minus offset. They have a Saturday night fund net. That net runs. Uh, uh, they ran for just about an hour. They don't have as many checkers as this one, but the last week they ran for just over an hour. I don't know what topics they were talking about there, but uh, the, that has a lot more structure than uh, this one. Yeah, checking a certain way, A through G, H through N, and so on and so forth. But uh, if you get a chance to condition our people, do check out that Saturday night fun net. Sunday evening. At 7.30 p.m. on the 145.110 repeater in the Monroe, the PL 123.0 minus offs at the Green County Aries Races net, uh, they hold their Sunday evening net. Uh, 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 my, uh, see, Scott, Case 9 YI checked in. Uh, I'm surprised he hasn't checked in this net already uh, uh, tonight. Uh, but these net control is a combination of Aries Races and Rag Tune net. Uh, Tune into that, those of you who haven't heard that net, tune into that on Sunday evening at 7.30 p.m. and find out for yourself. The uh, Big Thunder Ant Radio Club holds its uh, Sunday evening net at 8 p.m. on the 147.375 repeater in Belvedere. That has a PL of 100.0 um, uh, plus offset. That's a... That's a check in that net only. That net usually runs about 10, 15 minutes. 
the uh, Stir, uh, Sterling and Net, the Whiteside County Area Group holds their net at also at 8 p.m. on the 146.85 drill we hear in Sterling. That is PL 143.8 minus offset. Shouldn't have any problem getting into that one. That re the antenna is mounted on 300 feet in the air on the Illinois State Police District 1 radio tower. The uh, uh, Ra Ra Info Net, Monday Night Ra Ra Info Net meets at 7 p.m. either on this repeater or on 146.61. Uh, let's, let's see. Uh, uh, Larry K9 KZT and I share the news of net control. He ran the net uh, this past uh, Monday and I'll run it this uh, coming Monday. Uh, so uh, at the end of that net, there's, there's a, a, a cold practice with Larry K9 KZT. The uh, Lee County Aries Races Group holds its uh, Monday evening net at 8 p.m. on the 146.970 repeater in Dixon with a PL of 82.5 minus offset. At Lee, we found that net at 8.30 p.m. on the 146.730 repeater in Macau with a PL of, uh, of uh, 100.0 minus offset. The Kitchen Walk Amp Radio Cup holds its Monday evening net. Uh, okay, Tuesday evening, you got three nets. For, uh, let's see, the, uh, well, no, make that four nets. The, uh, first uh, of the two public, uh, health and uh, tech nets meets on this repeater at, uh, Tuesday evening at 7 p.m. What, uh, Larry, uh, H9GO is net control. And, uh, the second one is at, uh, 7 uh, p.m. on the Thursdays on the same repeater. That's when I, I share the news of net control. I do the net control on the Thursdays, I should say. The, uh, the we want to know how you're getting along health-wise. If you have any tech net questions. So, okay. Those are the Tuesday and Thursday health and tech nets on, uh, on this repeater at 7 p.m. both nights. The uh, rock, let me reset. I want to hear that cuckoo go off again. Tut, 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 like it happened earlier in the net. The Rock County Public Service Net meets at uh, 7 p.m. on the Tuesday evenings on the 145.45 Jerry Pier in, in, in uh, Janesville. That has a PL of uh, 123.0 uh, Maya Sunset. And of course, uh, uh, Rick uh, King. K9QDP holds the uh, North America Long Wires net on the at 8 p.m. on Tuesday evenings on on the 28.390 uh, megahertz of 20 meters on the 10 meters I should say upper side band. He had eight uh, uh, check-ins this past Tuesday. The uh, Oval County area uh, amateur. Uh, uh, radio net, including Harry Skywarn, holds its uh, uh, Tuesday evening net at 9 p.m. on the 147.165 repeater in Oregon, Illinois. It has a PL of 146.2 plus uh, offset. Wednesday evenings at uh, 7 p.m. here in Freeport on the 147.390 repeater, PL 114.8 plus offset. We have the weekly Steve's County Harry's net. I'm the I'm the net control. I was filling in for Tony N9RB as net control. Uh, that net is held at 7 p.m. At the Mimi found that net at 7.30 p.m. on the 147.120 repeater in Boyd with PL 123.0 plus offs at the Greer Boyd and Fredo Cup holds its uh, uh, Wednesday evening net. That's uh, uh, Wednesday evening at 8 p.m. Here in Freeport on the 147.390 repeater with the PL 114.8 uh, uh, plus all set. We have our Wednesday evening swap that runs from 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. and all traffic is handled. In case you didn't hear, I'm happy to report that Mel N9RPN, the trustee of our 39 repeater, is back home from the rehab, rehabilitation. <coughs> uh, that was a pleasant surprise when I heard his voice. He uh, and he ran the Amtrade on the, the news line. Uh, just like uh, he never missed a beat. So uh, he thanked everybody for the cards and the letters and the prayers. That was a great. 
Okay. Okay, uh, let's see. Uh, just a minute. Where is my, uh, oh yeah. The, uh, Salvation Army Siren it is held through the evening at, uh, 8 p.m. on the 147.390 uh, repeater here in Freeport, PL 114.8 plus laws. And I'm the net control of that net. I think I had, uh, uh, I think I had five check-ins uh, last night, so. The senile net is held on 14.287 megahertz, 20 meters upper sideband from 1400 to 1500 to hour Zulu. Uh, Chuck, WD9BB is net control of that net. He takes check-ins not only from, uh, uh, from the local area, but also uh, stateside throughout the USA. Okay, now you're all caught up to date on your own nets. Uh, support your local net control operators, your local nets. Support your local repeaters, your member of any ham radio club. Do support your uh, local club. Okay, at this time, do we have any more stations? We'd like to check in the Friday night fund net. Please call now. In this case, on GCR, the Friday Night Fund of the uh, K9RP repeater Robert transmitting from Friday Night Fund at Central and Freeport. Okay, I want to tell you about the Friday Night Fund at Central Hotline. Terry code 815 232 FNFN 2323636. Local Freeport number. I had no, uh, there, there, I've had no telephone tenants tonight during the net. But uh, if you hear that phone ring and I'm transmitting, it's a real telephone ring, folks, not that phony, phony cell phone ring. You've seen pictures of it on the Friday Night Fun that Facebook page. It's a traditional red desktop touchstone on that telephone. If you're out the six, you can hear the repair, but you can't get to it due to conditions or you're too far away from it, give me a call on the Friday Night Fun that hotline. Uh, I'll take your check in over the phone, but try to check it on the radio first. Then I want to tell you about the Friday Night Fun that the Central Facebook page. Uh, uh, contact... Uh, uh, Ricky, uh, WX9RLT, you want to sign up uh, uh, for it, and uh, I don't know how many stations have signed up for it, but uh, you've seen, uh, uh, you've seen uh, pictures of my update, pictures of my Amtrak, you see pertinent information about the Friday Night Fund, and you even have uh, see weather information. Also, you will hear past editions of the Friday Night Fund, net, thanks to uh, uh, Mike, K9MED Don Rochelle, he is in fact recording this net, for future uh, rebroadcasts and Friday Night Fun Net Facebook page. All you have to do is go to Friday Night Fun Net Central. If you want to hear the sign up, sign up for the uh, Facebook page. And if you want to hear the Friday Night, past Friday Night Fun Nets. Every night is uh, Friday night when you hear past, uh, uh, when you hear the, the Friday Night Fun Net on Facebook page. It's, uh, it's, uh, you hear the Friday Night Fun Net every night of the week. Let me reset. It's 3 o'clock in the morning, you can't sleep. So you decide, you know what, I'm going to turn the Friday Night Fun that Facebook page and I'm going to listen to the net. Maybe that'll, that'll put me to sleep. <laughs> if that doesn't, nothing will. <laughs> okay, at, at this time, do we have any more stations you want to check in? Please call now. Oh boy, there goes my papers all over the floor. All right, what do I want to do here? If I can find it, I want to read. I want to read the after's code. Ah, uh, here we go. Here we go. Okay, the after's code. The after is considerate. You never know when they use it here in such ways to lessen the pleasures of others. The after is loyal. He offers his loyalty, encouragement, and support to his fellow radio amateurs his local club and the American Radio Relay League to which AFTRA Radio is represented. The AFTRA uh, professional. He keeps his station abreast of science. It is well-built and sufficient. His operating practice is above reproach. The AFTRA is friendly. Slow and patient sending when they're requested. Friendly advice and, and calm to the beginner. Kindly assistance, cooperation, and consideration for the interests of others. These are marks of the AFTRA spirit. 
He after his balance, radio is his hobby. He never allows to interfere with any of his duties he holds to his home, his job, his school, or his community. The after is patriotic. His knowledge and his uh, station are always ready for the service of his country and his community. That's the after is cold. As Tony and I and RB always used to say, it is something to live by not only on the radio, but throughout life itself. And speaking of Tony, and I and RB, he's scheduled to come home up, uh, from his deployment in New Jersey sometime tomorrow. Thank you, we thank him for his, uh, his uh, service. And uh, don't forget the uh, AM radio operators, Salvation Army, Saturnet, Aries, Racies groups down in uh, Texas and Louisiana and uh, New York, New Jersey and Pennsylvania. Over there, you know, they were definitely uh, working there, you know what, uh, off, uh, during these, uh, these uh, recent disasters we've had. It was uh, Ida and Nicholas and uh, what have you. Keep them in your thoughts and prayers. Okay, at this time, do we have any more stations who'd like to check in the Friday Night Fun Deck? Please call now. Okay, does anybody have any additional questions, comments, input, or traffic you'd like to bring before the death this time? Okay, I want to thank uh, Dan, N9DCH, the trustee of this repeater, for allowing us to use this repeater to hold the Friday night fun then when we're not able to use the 6-1 repeater. I'm going to run down the list of stations that have checked in so far. So, uh, like I said, it's been a slow turnout tonight. Uh, I had no early check-ins at all, or no early bird check-ins. Here we go. K9KZT, Larry, the uh, King of CW, 89 at the VU. Oh, by the way, speaking of Larry, I forgot. At the end of the Elton Tech Nets on Tuesday and Thursday nights, there's a cold practice. Just like, just like there is on the, at the end of the Monday Night Raw Right Info Net. CW practice. Hosted by Larry, K9KZT, the king of CW. Now I'm going to run down the list of stations checked in so far. K9KZT, 89VU, 89NW, KD9SBA, KD9TJL, Tim, the new kid on the box in Winnebago County, W9JTC, Jamie. He said he was going to check in later tonight. Well, we'll see what happens. KD9SHD, checked in a short time, later checked in uh, later on during that. KL7JEB, those are actually my short time, my station. Okay, I want to thank, uh, uh, Kerry, K9 MAP, we're checking in. K9 MED, Mike and Rochelle is recording this net for future rebroadcasts on the Friday Night Fun Net uh, Facebook page. AC9 TO, Larry and Rogers, Ra Ra Board President. N9 TBP, KC9 GOL, Jimmy and Robert, WX9 RLT, Ricky and the Lux Bart, myself, KC9 G Sarah Net Control, K9 QDP, K9 QD, let's do that again. KD9 QV. Bravo, Brian, Case 9 QLS, so Linda and her better half, uh, uh, Pat, N9SOC. Uh, so good to hear Linda's voice again after several years' absence. Case 9 HKX, Guardian Roscoe, and last but certainly not least, Case 9 EPZ, uh, Alan Rochelle. I uh, got a total of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. 20 check-ins all during the net. Do we have any more stations who'd like to check in the Friday Night Fun Net? Please call now. Station with traffic. Uh, I can't quite catch that. Come again. Jim, I just wanted to make sure it's uh, KD9SHG Golf. Kilo Delta 9 Sierra Hotel Golf. I just wanted to make sure you got my uh, call sign cracked on that list. KD9SHG. All right, I wrote down the G over the D. Sorry about that. I always get that confused. <laughs> Thanks. Oh, you're all good. I just wanted to make sure. 
Yeah, good thing you said something there. Thanks. Okay. Any more stations you want to check in? Please go now. Well, I'm going to tell you what. I'm going to do my honorary check in. Tony, N9. E. R. B. It's the honorary check in. There's been a rap crazy. N9. G-A-B. By the way, they celebrated their wedding anniversary several days ago. And let's see. We mustn't forget the Kishwaukee River Yacht Club south of uh, Rockford. Uh, A-A-9. Sugar Fox. H-C honorary chicken. Okay. A-9 F-E-O. H-C honorary chicken. I'm surprised he didn't check in tonight. And last of all, and Richard, N nine G O in Belvedere. He doesn't check in often, but he listens every Friday night. Okay. And uh, let's see. You know what? I'm gonna check him in anyway. Mel, N nine R P N. H C honorary chicken. I'm also gonna put down the. K V nine L O A H C honorary chicken Brandon. He's involved in the Salvation Army now, and so okay. Tell you what, uh, A C nine J Z H C honorary chicken. And you know what? Uh, I gotta watch so I don't hear that cuckoo clock again. K D nine Q D P Papa uh, Rick and Rockford. He was on there earlier tonight, but he didn't check in the net. He hasn't checked in this net lately, so I've been putting him down as not already checking. One moment, please. You know who I forgot to put down? And I usually do this at the end of the DX corner. I, I, w, 9, G, D. In honor of the late, great Gene Duncan. W, 9, G, D. The king of DX. Every time you check in this head, you always have a DX report. That call is not owned by uh, uh, Gary, formerly King 9 FML. And speaking of, let's see. T D. 9 F M J. It's a, a Jennifer. H C honorary check in, so that's 32 check ins. Any more stations want to check in the Friday night fund that? Please call now. Okay. I suppose the Al K9 EPG is getting ready to go to the uh, 4437500 repeater in Chicago. Check out the uh, Night Watch net to be getting underway just about now. So, okay. Any more stations you want to check in? Please call now. This is K9 GCR, the Friday Night Fun Net on the. Uh, K-9 
KNRB repeater to Rockford transmitting for Friday night fun at Central Order Freeport. It is now 10 p.m. curfew time. Parents, do you know where your children are at? Okay, any more stations wishing to check in at this time? Please go now. Okay, be sure you tell your mothers, your fathers, your sons and daughters, your brothers and sisters, your aunts and uncles, your nieces, your nephews, uh, your, uh, let's see, your uh, in-laws, your grandparents, your in-laws, your, neighbor, uh, your neighbors uh, across the street, down the street, next door, be sure you tell your butcher, your baker, your candlestick baker, be sure you tell the clerk beyond the tent off counter at your grocery store, be sure to tell the clerk beyond the counter at your convenience store, be sure you tell your... Waiters, waitresses, bartenders, or uh, at your friendly neighborhood, uh, pubs, uh, bars, restaurants, taverns, or pubs. Uh, be sure you tell the garage mechanic, be sure you tell your, your bank teller, your teller, at the, uh, you go down to the post office, buy stamps, or whatever, you mail a letter. Be sure you tell the members of your local PTA or PTO. Be sure you tell your used car dealer, your, new, your used car dealer, your garage mechanic. Be sure you tell your... the, the Be sure you tell your uh, probation officer, your pro officer, or your divorce lawyer. Be sure you uh, tell your current uh, boyfriend or your current uh, girlfriend. Be sure you uh, uh, tell your uh, your boyfriends, your girlfriends, your ex-boyfriends, your ex-girlfriends, your husbands, your wives, your ex-husbands, your ex-wives, your ex-in-laws, of course, your old ladies about the Friday night fun. And the more check-in, the better the net. Make sure you have valid FCC license before you check in. I'm sorry, folks, we do not take check-ins from jailbirds, jammers, potty mouths, uh, crackheads, no beds, potheads, uh, telemarketers. If you uh, take an E during a sporting event, we don't take your check-ins. You don't back the blue, we don't take your check-ins. That's all there is to it. Okay, at this time, are there any more stations who want to check in the Friday Night Fun Net? Please call now. Okay, I want to thank everybody for participating in this net. Uh, uh, we, we kept the AmFest theme going. We're going to do it again next Friday night. I'm going to ask everybody, uh, when you go to Belvedere this Sunday, you, uh, what are you looking to buy? That will be the topic next week. Uh, so, okay, I, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. This concludes our main business for this evening, so I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to keep the, I'm going to be monitoring the frequency for any late check-ins, but I think what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to get and close down this net here. So, uh, with that, uh, this is the last call for any stations who want to check in the Friday night fund net from anywhere in the region without traffic, please call Case 9 GCR. Last call for Ratchet Jaw. Okay, uh, tune in again next week uh, for another edition of the Friday Night Fun Net. Hope we will be on, uh, if we're not on, six, hope we'll be back on 6 1. If not, we'll be here. Until then, this is Jim K. Sign G. Sarah. And I'll post on this Friday, September 17, 2021 edition of the Friday Night Fun Net. And return to repair in the frequency normal amp radio use at 10.05 p.m. Central Daylight. Uh, uh, time, uh, uh, three hours, five minutes Zulu time, with a grand total of 32 check-ins. Uh, seven threes, everybody, have a good evening, enjoy your weekend, uh, this is Case 9 GCR, uh, 73 to all, and to all, a good night.